welcome to nowadays we are going to have a look on today's news relevant for various competitive exams subscribe our channel for daily news and don't forget to click on bell icon the first news is regarding nagaland's nrc nagaland is set to initiate its own version of nrc from july 10th nagaland has decided to start a variant of the national register of citizens named register of indigenous inhabitants of nagaland that the neighboring assam is updating It is aimed at preparing a master list of all indigenous people and checking the issuance of fake indigenous inhabitant certificates. Designated team will fan out to each village and urban ward from July 10. The exercise is to be monitored by the Home Commissioner Naga Lands on local and non-local has a 60 days deadline. it will be prepared under the supervision of each district administration the nagaland's population is about 1988636 number of tribal and non tribal communities is 25 population of 16 recognized tribe is 90 percentage the source is hindu the second news is bad loans of state run banks are down by 10 percentage State-run banks have been struggling with bad loans for several years now. As of 31st March, the total bad loans of public sector banks stood at 8.06 trillion, down by a little more than 89,000 crores or 10 percentage over the period of a year. Why this 10 percentage fall in bad loans significant? Bad loans are largely loans that haven't been repaid for 90 days or more. For the first time in years, bad loans of public sector banks have shrunk year on year. Bad loans jumped from 2.27 trillion to 8.96 trillion between March 2014 and March 2018. Mid 2015, when RBI launched an asset quality review, following it up with other schemes that forced bank to recognize bad loans. April 2014 and March 2018 the total amount of loans written off by the public sector banks was around 3.17 trillion of this around 14 percentage was recovered previously if these loans are not recovered the central will have to keep investing money in public sector banks to keep them going the source is live mint The next one is about goods and service tax GST to mark 2 years of GST implementation on 1st July 2019 the finance ministry unveiled a new return filing mechanism besides a host of other reforms to simplify the indirect tax system as we know the advantages of GST includes simplified tax structure easy compliance promoting trade and industry and it support economic growth further there are reforms in current fiscal year it includes new return system introduction of new return system on trial basis from july 1st and on mandatory from october 1st 2019 sahaj and sugam returns for small tax payers are proposed single cash ledger rationalization of cash ledger in such a manner that earlier 20 heads are merged into 5 major heads there is only one cash ledger for tax interest penalty fee and others single refund disbursing the central or state government which sanctions refund disburse all four major heads of refunds namely cgst sgst igst and cess threshold limits for goods Threshold limits for rupees 40 lakhs is offered of suppliers of goods as per the choice of states. Composition scheme for services. Composition scheme for small service providers up to annual turnover of rupees 50 lakhs with a tax rate of 6 percentage. E-invoicing system. Electronic invoicing system in a phase-wise manner for business to business transaction is proposed to be introduced 
GST Appellate Tribunal GST Appellate Tribunal are being established at various state headquarters and area benches also. The source is PIB. The next news is about Indian startups. Indian startups have raised a record $3.9 billion from venture capitalists in the six months ended 30 June. The investment in 2019 are also comparable to the full year investment of $4.2 billion and $4.3 billion in 2016 and 2017 respectively. Venture capital is a financing that investors provide to startup companies and small businesses that are believed to have a long-term growth potential. Venture capital generally comes from well-off investors, investment banks and any other financial institutions. Venture capital firms or funds invest in these early stages companies in exchange for equity or an ownership stake. The source is Live Mint. The next news is about World Health Organization's norms on self-care interventions. The world will face a shortage of nearly 13 million healthcare workers by 2035. 400 million lack access to essential health service globally. The World Health Organization has launched its first guidelines on self-care interventions for health in response to an estimate that by 2035 the world will face a shortage of nearly 30 million healthcare workers and the fact that currently at least 400 million people worldwide lack access to the most essential health services. In its first volume, the guidelines focus on sexual and reproductive health and rights. Some of the interventions include cell sampling for human papilloma virus and sexually transmitted infections, self-injectable contraceptives, home-based ovulation predictor kits, human immunodeficiency virus self-testing, and self-management of medical abortion. They do not replace high-quality health service nor are they a shortcut to achieving universal health coverage. Self-care means it is the ability of individuals, families and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health and cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a health care provider. Self-care is also a means for people who are negatively affected by gender, political, cultural and power dynamics, including those who are forcibly displaced to have access to sexual and reproductive health services as many people are unable to make decisions around sexuality and reproduction. The guidelines will be expanded to other including self-care interventions in the guidelines meanwhile will be expanded to include other self-care interventions including for prevention and treatment of non-communicable diseases. World Health Organization is establishing a community of practice for self-care and will be promoting research and dialogue in this area during the self-care months between June 24 and July 24. The source is Hindu. The next news is regarding Japanese encephalitis outbreak in Assam. The Union Health Ministry has given the following support to Assam state for effective prevention and control of Japanese encephalitis. All 27 districts of Assam have been covered under Japanese encephalitis vaccination campaign for 1 to 15 years, followed by routine immunization as part of immunization program. 10 high endemic districts of Assam have been included under the multi-pronged strategy for prevention and control of Japanese encephalitis. These districts have also been covered under adult Japanese encephalitis vaccination campaign. Out of 10 high burned districts, funds have been provided for establishment of 7 pediatric ICU. Of these, 4 pediatric ICUs have been made functional. For the diagnosis of Japanese encephalitis, till date 28 
Sentinel Surveillance Hospitals has been identified. For rehabilitation of Japanese encephalitis disabled patients, central government has provided fund for strengthening of two physical medicine and rehabilitation department at Dibrugar Medical College and Guwahati Medical College. What is Japanese encephalitis? It is a vector-borne encephalitis transmitted by Culex group of mosquitoes. These mosquitoes breed mainly in rice field and large water bodies rich in aquatic vegetations. Migratory bird along with pigs in the community play an important role in the transmission of Japanese encephalitis from one area to other area. The source is PIB. The next news is about heat wave in Maharashtra. The heat wave in Maharashtra killed 9 people and affected 564 leading to their hospitalization this year. While monsoon has brought some respite in the last few days, activists said preparatory measures should start now to brave the next summer in a better way. Data collected by the Directorate of Health Service shows that nearly 2,300 cases and 64 deaths due to heat-related illness have been reported in the state since 2011. But these numbers could be underreported as the statics have been taken only from the government run medical facilities. When one is exposed to excessive heat, the temperature regulation of body collapses and the patient succumbs if timely treatment is not offered. Heat related mortalities have been observed to be worse in coastal areas due to higher humidity. This makes a large section of India's population even more vulnerable. A 2017 study shows 0.5 degree rise in average summer temperature could increase India's heat-related mortality rate by up to 2.5 times. People exposed to severe health heat can develop symptoms like heat exhaustion, cramp, rashes and so on. Intense thirst, fatigue, disorientation and feeling of paranoia, paranoia are also common. In severe cases, people may experience hallucinations, fainting and vomiting. If heat strokes kicks in and people do not get treatment for a long time, it can lead to damage of vital organs like brain and can cause and can be a fatal. Skymet's house predicted the monsoon will be will below average in 2019 and the high heat will force people to extract more groundwater. It will also exacerbate surface water evaporation, leaving less fresh water for recharging of groundwater. The excessive heat play a role in driving acute water shortage across India. Water reserves are dangerously low in 60% of country's river basin and it has so far received 44 less monsoon rain than average. The source is Hindu. The next news is related to Indian Coast Guard. K. Nadarajan replaced Rajendra Singh as the Director General of Indian Coast Guard. He is the 23rd Chief of India's Coastal Security Force. Indian Coast Guard is an armed force that protects India's maritime interest and enforces maritime law with the jurisdiction over the territorial waters of India, including its contiguous zone and exclusive economic zone. It was formally established in 1978 by the Coast Guard Act 1978 as an independent armed force of India. It operates under the Ministry of Defense. The organization is headed by the Director General Indian Coast Guard. The headquarters is located at New Delhi. The source is PIB. The next news is about Tamil Nadu State Butterfly. Tamil Nadu now officially has a state butterfly, the Tamil Yoman or the Tamil Marwan. The state has formally notified this by an order on the lines of the state tree palm and state bird emerald dove, state flower gloriosa and animal nilagir tar. 
The butterfly is endemic to Western Ghats. P. Mohan Prasanth, founder of Axe for Butterflies, a conservation group, said the process of identifying an iconic butterfly species to represent Tamil Nadu began around three years ago. The source is the Hindu. The next news is about Special Rhino Protection Force. An 82-member Special Protection Force trained to combat poachers and understand animal behavior was deployed in the Kasiranga National Park, Assam, on Sunday. Among the 82 personnel of the Special Rhino Protection Force are 8 women. The Special Rhino Protection Force is basically a tiger protection force named after the rhino since the threat of poaching is more for the one-horned herbivore. Their job profile includes protecting the stripped cat since Kaziranga is a tiger reserve. The Kaziranga National Park is about 40, 430 square kilometers. It encompasses eight ranges under two wildlife divisions, Eastern Assam and Bishwanth. Of the 82 Special Rhino Protection Force personnel, 60 have been assigned ranges under the Eastern Assam Wildlife Division on the southern bank of the river Brahmaputra. The source is the Hindu. The next news is about Mount Denali. The Indo-Tibetan Border Police Deputy Inspector General Abarna Kumar has become the first civil servant to scale Mount Denali. It is the highest peak in North America. Mount Denali was once called Mount McKinley. It was officially named Denali after protest by the native Koyukan Athabaskan people who called the mountain Denali, which is usually translated as the Great One. It is located in South Central Alaska. The mountain's peak is 6,190 meters above sea level, thus making it the tallest mountain in the North America and the third highest mountain of the seven summits following Mount Everest in Nepal and Aconcagua in Argentina. The source is All India Radio. The next news is about Kenya's tech war on poachers. A handful of surveillance camera made it seem very sophisticated for a sanctuary which is also home to the largest population of critically endangered black rhinos anywhere in East Africa. Last month, OI Pejita, a private conservancy on Kenya's Lekipia Plateau that shelters the only two northern white rhinos left on Earth, launched what it calls the world's first wildlife tech lab, a research hub at the heart of this sanctuary dedicated to bringing conservation management into the information age. Inside a retrofitted shipping container, computer engineers are testing the next generation of animal tracking chips and developing remote sensors that could one day monitor everything from ranger health to river levels. Data on everything from security breaches to fence damages, lion sightings and ranger location is fed into a digital dashboard accessible at a finger's touch. A pair of flashlighting handcuffs on the screen indicates an arrest. A poacher contact alert would trigger the immediate deployment of an armed ranger. It is among the latest technology deployed to combat poaching at OI Pejita. Among other projects, researchers are working towards a chip small enough to fit in a rhino horn but capable of live transmission of the animal's exact location and core vitals. The source is the Hindu. The next news is about Mahatma Gandhi IT and Biotechnology Park. The Mahatma Gandhi Information Technology and Biotech Park has been inaugurated in Cote d'Ivory, a country in Africa. The MGITBP was jointly inaugurated by Ambassadors of India and Vice President of Cote d'Ivory in Grand Bassam, Cote d'Ivory on 
27 June 2019. The MGIT BP is being built with India's assistance through Export Import Bank lines of credit of $20 million. MGIT BP is a dedicated free trade zone for IT and biotechnology. The project consists of two parts. Firstly, architectural concept and design for the buildings of free trade zone and construction of main building to host IT enterprises. Secondly, supply and commission of equipment which included computer assembly plant, VSAT with the satellite earth station, networking lab, human DNA lab, data storage area network, and audio visual lab and a power generator. Ivory Coast, also known as Cote d'Ivory and officially as the Republic of Cote d'Ivory, it is a sovereign state located in West Africa. The source is Business Standard. The next news is about National Film Heritage Mission. Minister of Information and Broadcasting Prakash Chavadekar today reviewed National Film Heritage Mission project in a meeting held at National Film Archives in Pune. National Film Archives of India, Pune, under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is the implementing ministry. Its objectives include preservation, conservation, digitization and restoration of Indian films. The strategy of National Film Heritage Mission are Condition assessment of film reels to ascertain the remaining life of the film The 2K and 4K picture and sound restoration of landmarks films of Indian and recording of new pictures and sound inter negatives of each film Digitization of films Construction of archival and preservation facilities called vaults training and workshops for in-house capacity building and web-based end-to-end IT solution. The assessment part of the project is now over. Conservation part will start soon and after that digitization work will start. After the restoration work is over, Indian films can be made available to the film lovers all over the world with the help of information technology. The source is All India Radio. The next news is about exercise ISLX-19. Abu Dhabi is hosting International Security Alliance first joint security exercise named ISLX-19. Representatives of 50 law enforcement agencies of the International Security Alliance are taking part in the first joint security exercise in Abu Dhabi. The participants include representatives from tactical teams, rapid intervention units, communications, civil defense and explosive ordnance disposal teams. International Security Alliance is an international working group to confront organized and transnational and extremist crimes. It was launched in 2017 in Abu Dhabi. Its secretariat is in Abu Dhabi. The alliance now comprises nine countries. It includes UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, France, Italy, Spain, Senegal, Singapore, and the Slovak Republic. The source is All India Radio. Thanks for watching. The PDF of detailed news is given in description. Subscribe our channel for daily news and don't forget to hit the bell icon. See you tomorrow.